I'm John Gelhaus. I'm a curator of entomology at the Academy of Natural Sciences of Drexel University here in Philadelphia. Pretty much from earliest that I remember, I was interested in insects. Crane flies are a very large group of flies worldwide, about 15,000 species described and maybe another 10,000 or more undescribed still. So they're these long-legged, slender body, but very long-legged flies. Some people call them daddy long-leg flies or daddy long legs. Anywhere you go in the world, you're going to find them. One of my colleagues, Clyde Golden, was also here, a limnologist here at the Academy, and he had been invited over by a Mongolian group to look at this lake in the northern part of the country called Lake Hovskol. Clyde went over, he saw this beautiful, pristine lake, uh, one of the, what's considered an ancient lake, um, and he thought it was a great opportunity to do uh, some science there, with the lake, and also to help guide the people we're interested in uh, protecting the lake, but realizing the need for some kind of development of the economy. So that's how I got involved. We got an exploratory kind of an international studies grant through National Science Foundation. We went and studied Lake Kovsko with a number of other people from the academy, uh, other American scientists, and then Mongolian scientists and students. And out of that work that I did there myself and a couple colleagues out of that work, we put together a proposal to start surveying the streams and rivers of Mongolia, not only for discovery, because we were finding new things, definitely, but also to try to use that data for Mongolia to be able to evaluate water quality and to protect the waters. We've explored all over the central drainage basin, what we call the Saling River Basin. That was the first project. And then the second project now we're just finishing up is on the western Mongolian drainages from the Altai Mountains and such. country was just beautiful. People are really uh, wonderful people, very generous. Uh, even though uh, most Mongolians are fairly poor and the ones living in the countryside are really poor. I mean, they're uh, nomadic herders, but uh, very generous, uh, warm people. I made many friends from that. It was just a wonderful adventure. We have an area. We select the sites we want to sample, and then we head off. Usually it's about a three-week time period in the field, and it's day after day sampling, moving, pretty much moving every day, hitting a few sites, finding a place to camp over, sampling there, and then packing up and moving on. So we're trying to get a broad view. Field life was just really pretty neat, pretty great. Mongolia's road system is not good at all. There's very little paved roads. The bridge systems are not in existence mostly, so you do lots of low water crossings across rivers to get from one part to another. You know, in some aspects, Mongolia's aquatic insects are far better known than in other parts of the world because if you can really put a focus on it, you can get quite a bit done. Okay, so this is the lower compactor of the insect collection. As I said, we're renovating this upper portion here but, and so we'll have more growth space, but uh, for the Mongolia material, we had to do some kind of fitting in as the project grew over time. 
So this is the pinned specimens, which are in the cabinets here. And then a lot of the crane flies in alcohol, that's on another portion here. But I can kind of show you what's in here. So this is some of the um, specimens that they're not aquatics, but we tend to pick them up as we do our field work. So these are antlions from Mongolia. This is pretty much for the early hoof school work, what I was what I was able to uh, sample and focus on. Now with the project that we've been working on in from 2002, we go all the way down here. We're at about 30,000 specimens, I think, right now for crane flies for Mongolia somewhere over 300 species for the country. When we started, it was about half that that was known from the hoof school work and some other work previous to that. So there's a lot that we found new, about 20 new species and many, many new country records. But if, let's look at a, a drawer that's pretty full. So these are crane flies. And you can see there's certainly a difference in size among the group and some the way they look, but they're long-legged flies. Very characteristic in Mongolia, actually. A very characteristic group, which the people uh, note because they've given it a, its own Mongolian name. They call them Tamelskin, which refers to their being like little camels. And Temi is camel in Mongolian, so they're like little camels, uh, I assume because of the long legs. Um, so the people, even in Mongolia, recognize these things as, as a part of their environment. There's a fair amount of work in one data point, in a sense, you know. Um, so it's, it's a fair amount of work to get a specimen that represents a species from a particular place and time. But the wonderful thing is these specimens will last for hundreds and hundreds of years in this collection. I expect uh, specialists will come back and resample these for, well, now we're doing it for certain molecular data. Who knows what kind of analyses will be available in the future that somebody might want to go in and uh, look at these or they will have a much better understanding of what the species are and how to tell the different species apart and identify them. So people might come back here in 50 years or 100 years to investigate exactly what species were being found. And that's the really important thing about having these collections uh, remain where they'll be protected and be accessible.